Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is Reformation Sunday, and perhaps one of my, I guess, three, four, five favorite days in the life of the church. Um, one of the things I like about it is we uh, change our pyramids to red, and while we do use red as our pyramid color for other days, it just seems to pop in particular on uh, Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, and on Reformation Sunday. So, uh, it's so very nice to be surrounded by red. Uh, there's a real warm feeling of red. Uh, it kind of reminds us the Holy Spirit is active in the church. When I see red, I think the Holy Spirit is really active. That doesn't mean that when it's, we show green that he's not active, but, but red seems to reflect the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the power to change our lives. And so that's really helpful to me, I think. And so is today's gospel. The gospel for every single Reformation Sunday is the same gospel. The reading from St. John, beginning in the 8th chapter, beginning on the 31st verse, where Jesus talks about making people free. And in Jesus' day, there were people certainly who were not free. There were people who were slaves. And so this idea of being free or being a slave was clear in everyone's mind. You were either free or you were a slave. And so when Jesus tells his disciples here, who are descendants of Abraham, uh, he tells them he will make them free. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They say, hey, wait a second. We're descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. How can you make us free? Well, if you don't think you're a slave, well, why would you think that you need to be made free? And Jesus reminds them, although they may be free according to the law, they are slaves to sin. And he reminds them that a slave does not have a permanent place in the household. Slaves, of course, could be sold. They could be given away. Um, and so, do you belong to a household? Jesus says, well, I'm the son. And the son has a permanent place in the household. And if the son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. In many ways, we are captive to sin, to our own brokenness, to the sin of our own selfishness, to the sin of thinking we're kind of the center in the world. And so when Jesus tells us, you, are, you, are, you will be made free, that he tells his disciples that you'll be made free, he tells that to us too. And we recognize that indeed, in some ways, we are not quite free. We're not free, certainly, to enjoy our life the way that God uh, made it for us, because sin always seems to get in the way. But through Jesus Christ, through God's amazing grace, through the gift of faith, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can be free. That doesn't mean we'll never sin again. But certainly we won't be captive to the uh, torment of uh, of sin which continues to lead us to corruption and death and condemnation for all eternity. Life can be certainly more pleasant if we are free in Christ Jesus. Free not to be selfish or destructive or ignorant, occasionally we'll fall into that, but free to be kind and loving and generous and peaceful and perhaps at times bold in our faith. 
I want to share with you one thought about Reformation Sunday, which is probably peculiar to me. When I became a, a, a Lutheran, I had been a, a Catholic, an Eastern Rite Catholic, one of the things that impressed me about Luther was his willingness to question religious authorities. You see, Luther knew the scriptures. He was a scholar. He was a monk. He read the scriptures in their native languages, in the Old Testament Hebrew as well as the New Testament Greek. And he had difficulty with reading the scriptures and understanding how the religious authorities of his day um, were acting as they were, especially when it came to indulgences. And I'm not going to explain in detail what an indulgence is, but it is kind of a, a get out of purgatory, maybe not free card, but an opportunity to get out of purgatory a little earlier than you would be there. Purgatory was the place that Roman Catholics believed that you would go after you had died because you had sins on your soul that needed to be cleaned. It's kind of like a, a place where your sins would be scrubbed away. Now you might be in purgatory for years, literally thousands of years, until all your sins were scrubbed away and then you could enter heaven. In Martin Luther's day, there were people who believed, religious authorities who believed, that the good works of the past saints could be transferred from those saints who had passed away to some other person who needed them. The person could be alive or the person may have passed away. But those good works could be transferred and they would lessen the amount of time that you would spend in purgatory. You could literally kind of not buy your way out of hell, but certainly quicken your time out of purgatory. And so people who had money would buy indulgences for their loved ones who had passed away. And sometimes people would buy them for themselves. And if you had enough money, you might purchase an indulgence uh, for literally hundreds of years of time in purgatory. And Luther began to understand that although the church may have accumulated good works through past saints, the church and especially the Pope was not in a position to transfer them or to perhaps put a value on them. And so in his 95 Thesis, he says as much. He questions the religious authorities of the Pope and those people who were surrounding the Pope. And so I tell you, when it comes to Reformation Day, one of the things that makes Martin Luther so wonderful in my mind is that, that ability to question religious authorities when you don't understand something. And I know I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to tell you, if your pastor tells you something and you don't understand it, ask your pastor what he or she means. Because a good pastor will take the time to try to explain it to you. And if you still don't understand, press on. Because salvation is too important to just believe that your pastor is right and you don't understand. You know, it's funny. People will spend a lot of time um, working on things that are important to them. And they will spend time uh, getting into the details of those things. Perhaps you're a, a hobbyist or a sports fanatic and, and you get into the rules and you get into the instructions and, and you learn them because they're important to you. And yet when it comes to scripture, there are things that are confusing. And many times believers just don't ask questions. How can this be true? What scripture applies? Why do you say that, Pastor? I'm giving you the opportunity that as a Christian, you have the freedom to ask people who are in religious authority, why do you believe what you believe? Why do you say things that you say? Show me the scripture or show me something or, or explain it with reason and common sense to me. And you have the right to ask those questions. More so, you have the necessity to ask them. We as believers don't all believe exactly the same things. And it's important for people who are in positions of, of leadership in the church to be able to communicate those things to others. Sometimes we do a good job. Sometimes we don't. So if there's something that happens in the life of the church and you don't understand why it happens, or perhaps in a sermon, the pastor says something and you say, wait a second, that doesn't sound right. Well, then confront the pastor. Ask why he or she said what they did. If something happens in the church and it doesn't seem right to you, ask the question. Ask a council member or ask the pastor, why do we do this? Of what benefit is it? How is it, how is it consistent with our Christian faith? Because when you ask the question, it forces people to think about, about what you're asking 
and perhaps it'll keep us on a straighter course. The Reformation really is, is that, that time in the life of the church where perhaps they had wandered a bit and they needed to be on a straighter course. And through the power of the Holy Spirit and the boldness of Christians, they were able to get back on track and perhaps follow closer in the path of Christ. My hope for you and for me is that we can communicate with one another more clearly, that I can share the gospel with you in ways that both of us understand, and that we have a common language in our faith, and that if those times come up when you have a question, you'll be bold enough to ask me, and I'll be kind enough and thoughtful enough and faithful enough to find you an answer, and I'll do my best. I promise I will. May this word of God strengthen us in our faith. May we find that as we follow in the path of Christ, we are indeed more free. Free to love, free to be kind, free to be generous, free to be better people than we would otherwise be. And may as we we go through this process of listening and speaking, may we grow in our faith. So that perhaps one day when Christ calls us home, he'll call us home knowing that we We're bigger Christians and perhaps far better believers than we were before. People worthy to be called saints. Amen.
Reform your church and write the law of love upon our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore this good earth which you have entrusted to our care. Enrich soils, cleanse waters, and purify the air. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring an end to war and to the violence that shakes the nations and threatens your people. Fill the earth with your peace and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the present help of those who suffer with poverty, abandonment, unemployment, and uncertainty. Bring healing and wholeness to those who are sick, ill, injured, or broken. We especially pray for everyone on our prayer list, and we pray in particular for those people who are suffering from COVID-19 and those who are caring for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us mindful that in ourselves we are miserable sinners, but by your grace we are daily fashioned into saints. Help us to trust in your mercy and to forgive as we have been forgiven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died in Christ and now rest in the fullness of your glory. Help us to use our time wisely as we await your promise of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting and delighting in you, we commend all our lives into your loving hands. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now pray as our Lord taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace. Love God and serve your neighbor. Amen.